Please on Tony Breidinger, thanks in the tri -oval. Greg Van Alst making moves early. Oh, no, bit. trouble already. And we've got Tony Breidinger around the 25, and they're wrecking all over the place. Caution Shane is out. As well. Yeah, S SVG is in that as well. Shane Van Gisbergen had to run this race to be able to race in the Xfinity race, so this will be interesting. Let's see if she, she gets squeezed. So I, th I think the O2 got a got a push there and wiggled down the racetrack, and then they just kind of squeezed and touched on corner entry to one. And just really tough part of the corner. The car is really light, and uh, obviously a, a small push when you're racing that close, you know, only a few inches door to door, uh, generates some contact. Yeah, and the majority of these cars that involve nothing, nothing they could do. There, Tony gets into the 97 of Jason Kitzmiller. And everybody else is just checking up, trying to miss yeah. it. I mean, half of doing their best to try to miss it. See the 28 on the right Ooh. side of your screen spinning around. That's Shane Van Gisbergen. Here's a suit chief on board for Tony Breidinger. Yeah, so when that, that push got delivered to the 55, I mean, Tony, you can see by the lines on the racetrack, she was holding her car dead straight, just uh, got a push. That O2 car came down the racetrack and, and shoved her into the inside lane, and then everyone else is involved. Yeah, I mean, we're two, three laps into the race, and we're already pushing and pushing people sideways. It was really cool track. reading some of Marco's interviews about why he wants to be in this series. He's, he's raced on some of the biggest stage. Ooh, big accident with uh, one of our already damaged cars. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think similar to what you said, Phil, probably had a, had a tire go down. and it's all the debris on the racetrack, probably from where that tire went down. Crush panel, all, the whole rear fender is gone. On many car. of that, really at all, throughout the field. So I think you got the fast. Oh, fast no. Cars. Oh, gosh. We've got Christian Rose Christian trying Rose. to hang on to it. Can he save it? They're avoiding him all around. What is any time you can keep it off the wall here is a job well done for Christian Rose. So here he is, bottom lane in the trial. It's like the just getting a push. Car, just, just a push going yeah. but That's not the place to push it's, in the trial book. The corners, I know the ARC officials tell these drivers all the time, please don't push in the corners or in the trial bowl, and that's that's where it goes bad. It's it's the absolute worst place on the racetrack to, to, to give a push, receive a push, because it, you have both. And caution comes out. This is the scheduled caution, oh, and we have cars all the way around as the caution came out. That's Willie Mullins, the pole sitter going around. Dale Quarterly, the four, Leland Honeyman, and the zero two. Got a couple others back there involved. Forty in here. We've got Mark Andretti already spun all the way at the top of the field. Comes down in Dale Quarterly and uh, other cars just dodging the miss and locking down brakes. Uh, I wonder what further back, probably exit of turn two, how uh, how Marco got uh, got turned sideways. Caution is going to come out. I'm not sure it's out yet. Yep, you saw it on the Did you see, okay. wall right so there. So the caution yeah, is out, but I'm not sure anyone had backed off yet. They, they looked really stacked up in that outside lane. I don't know if the the, the couple of leaders were backing up, but you know Marco was really tucked up. I believe that was the 55 at Gustine. I think he was trying to stay off of him, and whether if that's due to the fact that Mark. Watch right side of your screen. There's the 17 of Marco. Yeah, so Marco actually never even gets to the back of him. So he was just trying to stay off of the 55 because he got checked up behind, behind I believe, LeVar Scott. Just a bit of an accordion there. Yeah, Marco may have tapped the brakes to keep him running into the 55. Watch, the car's going to start sparking like maybe maybe he's, he's broken a track bar mount or something like that, but it's going to turn it sideways. He's running sixth at the time and uh, does a good job keeping the car off the wall, but does bend the nose up quite a bit. And, um, like Phil mentioned, I think I think something more more suspension related happened there. I mean, you saw a piece go flying and hit the outside wall. I think it all depends on how long this outside lane stays in. We've got two really really fast cars. And around spin in the goes back. the 99. That's Michael Maples. Uh, the wall. Oh gosh! And another Impact. huge hit, and they hit again. And there's change. Mentioned Scott Melton. Is that big big Willie? That was big oh. Willie that hit Scott Melton. Willie Mullins right there in the three. He was the pole sitter. Looked like he, he was. Yeah, He's going to catch Melton yeah, in the right back. rear corner. Tell you what, that was a great evasive maneuver by that, that black car there. And a lot of these other guys missing some of this some of this debris. And then you got SVG here coming to pit road. And 
just rejoining the race and he tattoos the infield. Chantel, the 75 goes around. You could see it right there where you mentioned that it looked like the throttle hung. Hoping that Willie is okay. So violent, you see Hard, that yeah. impact. We've this got a car man. on fire. We've got a car two. on fire. There Marco it is, Andretti. Marco Andretti. He's had that damage, had a couple issues earlier, and the caution is out for the eighth time with about three and a half laps Let's to go. File, in this race. So whether that's just from damage from before, started smoking on on corner entry there, turn one, right front tire flat yeah. into the wall, probably mm. cuts an oil line or something yeah. that caused that fire. He was running up in the top ten. I when we talked before about him running just outside the top ten, it was not out of the question, but. Uh, from it's the outside gonna be as well. Jake's Lots. gonna have a run. Now it seizes up a little bit. A little side grab from Andres Perez. It's gonna depend on which lane gets the bigger oh, push. Oh, no. Jake Finch Jake goes Finch around and dominated this race, wrecking all over the place at the front of the field. That will end this race. Andres Perez, huge hit on top of another Let's see what car. happened here on the final lap. Just a lot of pushes, and there was a lot of momentum coming back to that third row, and uh, that outside lane started it, and... Uh, yeah, just a lot of pushing and shoving. Yeah, I think Andy Jay was in the back of Jake, and I think Andy Jay had uh, had Lewis in the back of him as well, and then yeah, they all just it was almost simultaneous. The the inside and the outside got to the second row at the same time and just kind of fishtailed each other in into both lanes. Watch Perez in that two car up against the outside wall. He's actually climbing over climbing another car here, and he like stays mounted on top yeah, of the Andy, Andy car. Jay's car. Is that Armani Williams? It is. It is. The 13. What an impact for Jake Finch. Led 66 laps tonight, only to go straight into the wall on the final lap. Here's another look. Yeah, Jake's just going down the straightaway, and they start pushing and shoving there. And should be good on onboard view here from uh, from Perez coming up, as he's he's obviously the car that's. He's on top He's on of Andy Jankowiak's car. Yeah. This could be a wild ride. So he's getting the side draft, thinks he has a chance to, to win this race, and then lots of pushing and shoving. 20 gets turned into the fence, and then two car goes for a ride. Oh, my goodness. Amazing pictures.